Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there, welcome back. As you see, it says here, live view, comet of the century from telescope. Wait a minute, where did that come from? Uh, yeah, this one snuck up on me. I didn't notice this comet coming. Or, well, again, we're going to give you a uh, remote viewing of the comet via Cindy here, and that's the difference with us. Again, we want to thank everybody uh, that's supporting us over on Patreon. We couldn't do it without you guys. No, we could not. We want to say a huge thank you to our newest Patreon, Miss Viola. Thank you for your support. Absolutely. We did a hard-hitting one yesterday that was a Patreon exclusive. Um, again, you know, there's stuff that goes up over there multiple times, typically every week, exclusives. So, you know, where did this sneak up on us from? I, maybe you guys are aware of this. I wasn't. Scientists predict the comet will reach peak brightness around October 12th when it will pass closest to Earth. And so this one is called Tukishan, Tuk Tukishan Atlas. And they say it could blaze brighter than Hale Bop and you know, perhaps be the comet of a century. Well, if it is the comet of a century, uh, then that would definitely feel like another uh, chance at it being the one that Nostradamus was talking about, which uh, again, so many of us were looking for that April comet to be that comet. Um, but again, comets are what they tell us they are and what we see is something very very different when we look at it from a remote viewing uh, standpoint i did think it was really really interesting though the timing of this um october 12th hmm october 12th because our, our buddy david debine over at dap 2030 He's talking about three potential reset events in the next six months. And this is yesterday's video or three days ago. Uh, again, this is something that he's been talking to us about for years. Uh, this October 24th alignment of the giant planets. He's always had the feeling that this could induce mud flood events. And, and this goes back to discussions that we've had with David, you know, uh, personally, uh, all the way back to like 2020, I want to say 2019, 2020, uh, he was pointing to this point in time and saying, you know, the, the potential he felt was there for uh, mud flood type of events to happen. Um, again, you know, check it out if you're not subscribed to David Adapt 2030. I know a lot of you guys are. Uh, he's been a friend of Cindy and mine for years. Right. I mean, there's whenever I see these planetary alignments, it's it's exciting. Now, I, I do not see anything happening in the 3D, although we could have storms. We could have floods because you guys have seen it. The floods are really, really bad and they seem to be getting worse. So maybe this is going to bring in some uh, extra flooding, but the big changes that I'm seeing are not in this 3D dimension. It, it's more in the other dimensions where I see waves of information coming in, uh, flooding in, and making changes, making more awareness, making uh, more ability for dimensions to connect with one another. So I do think this is going to bring a stronger connection between 3D, 4D, and 5D and allow these dimensions to communicate with one another so that's what i see when these energies come together and that magnetic pulling happens it's actually happening in our soul and pulling us together in a way absolutely and you know he has 79 ad and the events of 79 ad volcanic um again and earthquakes you know the Matthew 24 says, you know, there you'll be signs, you know, earthquakes and wars in various places. Again, there's earthquakes all the time. You know, we typically do get a 7.0 uh, pretty much every month, you know. So there are big quakes that come. Uh, and there's never been a period in the last 6,000 years where there hasn't been war on Earth in any particular year. Uh, and wars are nonstop right now. There's there's probably over a hundred wars ongoing when you really really look at it on the planet. 
So, you know, those are very, very general uh, type of things to say. However, you know, th th these are the times uh, right now of a major transition. We, we all know it. We sense it. We see it. And as he's talking about reset events, you know, there are powers that be have talked about big, momentous, grand resets. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's also looking at next April, which again, you know, I, I think um, I would have to say that I feel like I was jumping the gun with this April. But I do think, again, we, we can change timelines. We can also impact of the plans of the control system as they go by AI algorithms for their potentials. Uh, and so many of us are, are familiar with the whole concept of AI algorithms. Now they rule the roost in, in the big companies, you know, Google, YouTube, it's all about AI algorithms. So they'll move to whatever is the highest potential, high, highest likelihood for success. And our consciousness can absolutely affect all that and ultimately this is a war of consciousness that's going on right now so you know i think it's fascinating to see that the timing that we have right now um we have these big alignments which again the planets all do have huge effects on us and us uh, our consciousness spiritually physically emotionally this is why astrology really works and and now again western astrology does not take into account the tilt of the earth where the vedic astrology does so that's why we definitely prefer uh, vedic astrology and it's even thought that alexander the great was the bringer of astrology to the west that he got when he invaded india and was basically taking what was already in place over in India and bringing it to the West. As you guys may have seen, we were talking about uh, the whole um, <laughs> Brahma Abraham thing and, and, and others. Everything has basically been revised and it is a revision of the stuff that has gone earlier. And we see leftovers of previous civilizations. Now, Tartaria seems to be a bigger topic than Atlantis, Lemuria, and Mew. It seems everybody's jumped on the Tartaria mud flood bandwagon because the evidence is overwhelming that the planet goes through these cataclysms. Uh, I don't think it's just every 12,000 years, though. I think, you know, this is something that's an ongoing cycle that never really stops. It just intensifies. It ebbs and flows. And we are at one of those big, big time flow intensifying uh, periods in time. Well, uh, very much like labor pains, you know, I mean, they, they come on, up and they come in waves and they get closer and closer together or just like a, a frog in boiling water. He doesn't recognize that it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. I, I think we are all kind of in that boat and we need to stay vigilant as far as what we're surrounding ourselves with what we are taking into our energy field because that could lead us down a path that we really don't want to go down. Um, but it, it is, uh, it's very, very tricky right now because in some ways there's no avoiding these changes. In other ways, you know, you want to make sure you're on the right wave to ride yourself into your destination that you want and your soul because no, they do not control our destiny. Absolutely not. We choose how we are going to get to a certain place. Absolutely. So, you know, again, you have this alignment going on. We have this comet, which, you know, again, is being billed as uh, the potential comet of the century. Now, the comet that came in April, what we got was it was a ship and it was even called the Draco Comet. It was a reptilian ship from, uh, you know, the Draco constellation. And, you know, what we get with this comet that's coming right now is it is a ship. And just think about this. You know, again, they show us asteroids breaking up all the time or apparently breaking up. Um, well, when we search into them, what do we feel? We feel that, you know, there are still um, battles going on in the skies above us. And some things which, you know, they tell us, oh, that's just Russian booster rockets or that's just Chinese space junk coming down. In reality, uh, a lot of times, often is the case, we get that this is a ship that was destroyed or damaged in conflict over our heads. 
literally this war has never stopped the war in which we we hear the term spiritual battle what's spiritual really define spiritual battle what we're talking about is multi-dimensional battle that moves beyond just the plane of earth it, it goes beyond just the earth this is something that is you know galactic in in nature and even multi-dimensional in nature so with this particular comet uh which again we get is a ship cindy sees that this is not necessarily uh draco or reptilian but it does have a very very specific purpose and the timing is not arbitrary this timing is exactly uh, when it needs to be in order to 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 notify certain things that are happening on the planet atmosphere etc mm -hmm. right i mean they're here what I, what i pick up is like it, it's a group of different types of entities from different stars or different planets and they are coming together to get information from earth so they're coming here to get air samples they're coming here to get soil samples they're here to somehow get consciousness samples and i cannot explain how they do that this is just the information that's coming in and this could have a lot to do with our uh uh with what's coming in the 2025 treaty so it, it it's very vague to me i I really feel I am cut off to a lot of things that are going to interrupt people's um, walk on this planet. Your human experience is so, so important. So I do get information. It's not as clear and precise as I would like. It's not as clear and precise as you might like. But this is the information that's coming in. This is what I'm getting. And there's uh, all kinds. They are coming together all kinds of information in ways that I don't understand. I don't understand how they do it. It's technology that's beyond me, but they are. And it's showing in, in our energy field, it's showing as a, a comet. In our energy field, it looks like it's something in the sky, but we got to understand we're dealing with different dimensions that are beginning to collapse on themselves. So we can see it, but we cannot always see the perspective in which it sees us. And I got to say, that that's really the war with this spirituality is, is it's on our perspective like how do we see things and there's entities out there who are trying to uh control our perspective in so many ways that will benefit them in some way shape or form you know as far as like something like feeding so i mean it, it's really a mess out there and we just always have to constantly be checking ourselves please um expand on that dimensions that are collapsing because mm -hmm. you you mentioned we you know we're dealing with dimensions that are collapsing well dimensions that are collapsing on each other they're coming closer together which means there's going to be more uh uh interruptions between say 3d and 4d people are going to be seeing more things from the corner of their eye they might they might see shadows more often they might even see more uh in, in insects are a big one uh dimensional insects 40 insects you might see a lot of those you might see a lot of little black portals so what what i'm seeing is a lot of the 4d coming into the 3d focus and it really can kind of mess with some people but at the same time you can bounce past that and you can e more easily reach a, a higher fourth dimensional state of being or a fifth dimensional state of being so there's benefits to it all and they are coming together and they're being sewn together in, in a very intricate beautiful multi-dimensional blanket that we have yet to see um, the ending but it's always coming it's al always being made absolutely and this is part of the transition of the yugas everything really changes it changes more than most people can comprehend so uh october 12th you know it's it's interesting too because if you remember uh the polish psychic that we talk about a lot uh christoph you know one thing that he sees coming that he seems to be very riled up about is um the economic collapse which is being manufactured um and it is being manufactured uh obviously to to <laughs> you know so many of us so you know he's he's seeing uh and again he's somebody that's helped 
uh, the police to find people. Um, you know, he, he is gifted. He's very, very gifted. And when we do our remote viewing and, and connect to our guides, and then when we look to somebody that we feel is legit, like Christoph here, and he's seeing similar, uh, and then of course, you know, the, the future forecasters, and there's many others out there too, um, that are tapping into uh, abilities that we all have at least as potential in this time, as long as we steer clear of uh, the mind altering substances as much as possible and really, really harness that mind body breath practice again, meditation, daily yoga, qigong. You know, this is the center point. Cindy and I do this for hours every day. It is part of our regular practice. It becomes just who we are. And it's always really been who we are. Cindy's been able to do these things since she was a little girl. So, you know, what he is seeing is an illness coming. Uh, yes, absolutely. There is something to be cautious and aware of because there is something coming that he said will start to manifest itself right now like the middle of september you'll get a couple of cases here and there and then he said by the time we're in november everybody's going to know and they're going to try to create some sort of lockdown again and at the same time you have them collapsing purposely uh, the economy and we also have the war expanding. So we have all these things going on. In fact, you know, now that there is a comet, because this was the thing that was missing from the scenario, it, it actually fits um, the timing uh, kind of perfectly. So, you know, be aware, October, um, right now, right, the fall, fall 2024, 2024, uh, is looking um, very, very much uh, as a challenging period of time. At the same time, be prepared, be aware, but do not let the fear override you because you need to keep your frequency up. And this is, again, where it doesn't do any good not to tell somebody if they got their headphones on, they can't feel the vibration, the train's coming down the track and the train's going to squish them. You got to yell at them. You got to get their attention and tell them to get off the track. And that's going to probably, you know, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to jolt them. But we have to jolt them. Otherwise, they're going to get squished. So this is where some would say, well, you guys focus too much on the negative. You know, right now, there are so many people leaving this density in droves. That number is going to increase dramatically, unfortunately, over the next year, especially. Perhaps the potential is there over the next, you know, the upcoming months. So we have to be aware of what's going on. If we're not aware, you can't really prepare and you need to prepare spiritually too. So again, you know, doing the work with the mind, body, breath, uh, making sure that you have some sort of meditative practice as well as being prepared with food, water, all the basic things, backup energy, you know, plans as well. So, you know, this is what we are looking at at this time. We have now a comet uh, that could fil fit the bill as far as these prophecies, whether it's Nostradamus or others. Many others have also seen comets at this time. The thing that now we're into, too, is it does fit uh, the prophecies of Alois Urmiler saying, when does it start? It's in the fall. It's at harvest time. You know, harvest moon, you think what? You know, again, October. So, you know, be aware now because everything does kind of kind of seem to be coming together. So we got to ride out the storm and we have to recognize what's going on with the storm. It is completely artificial in nature. It's been a constructed storm. Sure. You know, they didn't necessarily move all these planets into place. But they understand astrology. They understand how the natural matrix works and they use it to their advantage. Mm -hmm. And it's so not fair. I mean, it's so not fair. If people were not so blinded by the dogmatic belief system, they would have access to this magical world too. I mean, it's the magic that brings tears to my eyes when I when I see this consciousness put to work after after I work with it and it works with me there there's no just me there is this huge conversation going on all around me and, and the idea that I can I can tap into it and I can utilize it and I can help people with it and I can direct it 
it, it's just so beautiful and so many people are blocked from that and it's just to me it's a shame but then again I have to trust because everybody is on their own timing and everyone is scheduled their alarm clock is set whenever it is set for it's just I, I guess I'm here because I think if I would have heard uh, about my abilities and what I could really truly do earlier you know I would have done things a lot lot different so it's important to me to express this information so that someone might hear it so that someone might do something different and you never know when a life might get saved yes absolutely and again you know those deep dives into consciousness because the fundamentalist religions are in created they're completely created by the dark matrix within the natural matrix in order to trap minds and in order to you to not go out and try to use your co-creative power. When you look to the Kabbalah, that's something that was taught amongst initiates. And what does the Kabbalah teach us? It teaches us that all is mind, ultimately, and, and we are the co-creators of this reality. We're, we're living in a construct that is created for consciousness. Now, what do they teach you in, in the fundamentalist religions? It's basically just be obedient to, to God, Colossians. 322 you know slaves obey your human masters as you would your non-human masters don't question anything because as rockefeller said we don't want a nation of thinkers we we just need workers that's it and we don't need iqs to be very very high by the way they say that the average iq in haiti is somewhere in the mid 60s to mid 70s this is what they've done they've created the conditions where we are almost like automatons we we have very very little self-awareness what's at the heart of the hindu tradition self-awareness understanding your potential and who you are and who you want to be as you know again hinduism is perhaps the oldest form of organized religion on the planet every religion has been tainted and con you know the control system has gotten a hold of everything that it can and turned things dogmatic as it could so it can set us one upon the other that's all it ever does is it manufactures these wars it keeps us from creating a peaceful happy reality and it gives us the impression that it has to be has to be doom gloom and death and disaster because you know they're saying that's what the creator wants that's what the creators of the dark matrix wants because that leads to more pain suffering louche which is energetic food for the dark demonic forces that literally give us the organized religions in the first place so you know until somebody realizes that it's all a construct uh, of the dark matrix you're still sound asleep and walking off the cliff like the sheep will have been programmed to. I think one thing that we need to do is watch our reactivity to things. So if you have a knee-jerk reaction to something, that needs to be looked at. Like, where does that come from? Why is that? Is that explainable? Is that via trauma? Is 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 your higher self trying to tell you something are you giving away your power so are you giving away your power uh in the effort to protect something that you believe to be true or is it pr to protect something that you yourself have deemed to be true there is a big difference and it takes time to sort it out and uh you know there is no one person better than the other it's it's all about frequency and it's where you're at in your frequency and naturally as souls our energy strives to do better it strives to expand and that's where we're at so if you're just really reactive to something you just want to make sure you're not handing your power over to that thing and then if you are why are you handing your power over to that thing uh, have you been traumatized is there something that you need to look at is it something that higher self is really trying to tell you and it hurts you know it hurts for a reason it hurts because there's a conversation going on and it's up to us to figure it out so it it made me think about astral theology when you look at these depictions what do you have you have somebody here driving 
a sword into a bowl and this is part of the Mithraic mysteries um, you know astro theology what what does this really symbolize well remember when we go through the wheel um, it uh, of the constellations when we look to um, the time periods it, it looks like it's going backwards and so you know again the age of Taurus was slaughtered by the age of, of Aries and you know again th this is all part of the the mysteries which you know you learn these things in layers you start to see the astro theology and you understand um, a little bit more than you do when you're just fundamentally mindsetted because that is the complete blinders on then then we start to look outside a little bit and we start you know to, to recognize that there is a symbolism going on now Mithras the Mithraic mysteries the cult of Mithras a Roman mystery religion centered around the god Mithras although inspired by Iranian worship of the Zoroastrian divinity Mithra now Mithra literally translates to friend in in uh, in uh, Sanskrit um, it's it's interesting to see this and Mitra is is also a, a Sanskrit deity but in reality who was Mithras well he was an extraterrestrial <laughs> he was uh, you know definitively an extraterrestrial from what we have gotten and in fact uh, Cindy was able to channel him at one point in time when we were in New Mexico out deep in the desert and there was no frequencies around us and so you know they had a very complex system of seven grades of initiation and communal ritual meals initiates called themselves uh, those united by a handshake and somebody said you know when we showed the handshake of Kamala and Trump they're like oh stop that you know it's like no you don't understand the bigger picture here yeah a handshake could be a handshake but at the same time these people are all initiated into the secrets they understand that everything that we've taken as gods is nothing but extraterrestrials good bad and a lot in between there's an awful lot of these extraterrestrials which are not actively part of the system but they're not what i would call the devas they're certainly not angelic either they're kind of you know they come and they go and and you know they will if it benefits them you know they'll interact with humans or if it's if it's not going to benefit them they'll, they'll move on they'll also see who they can recruit uh, that might be of service to them in some ways so Mithraism was was basically a rival of early Christianity and in fact you'll find that a lot of um, the Christian stuff does come out of you know this particular religion which is really again based on the interactions with just one one individual that was an extraterrestrial as ultimately all these gods are extraterrestrials doesn't mean that they're all part of um, the dark Anunnakian draconian reptilian system because many aren't and in fact again when you go into the Bronze Age which we're going back into you're gonna meet a lot of those that are not necessarily good they're not necessarily bad is in reference to how they view humanity they're more just curious and they're just checking us out in so many ways and you know lightly interacting mm -hmm. yeah I, um so uh, here we are we find ourselves on a journey and we find ourselves smack in the middle of so many mysteries and so many different um different different things going on that pull our attention here pull our attention there what what is going on here where is this path leading all of us you know the the commonality is we're all on this path together and we're all striving for something together but at the same time that thing needs to be found individually and then as a collective but we can work together right now we can work together to make positive change and you guys were really instrumental we had mentioned a family member that was really really not well he was very sick and we we're working with his mother to help and, and I'm happy to report that uh, Nate is doing better he's resting more he's he's gaining ground and we are so excited and, and some of you were extremely in instrumental but with all of you it's really making a positive change thank you 
Absolutely. Again, prioritize that mind-body-breath practice and develop your abilities to become a conscious creator and we'll have a positive outcome. As always, guys, thanks for your support over on Patreon. Couldn't do it without you. Source blessing. Namaste. Namaste.